Well, good afternoon, everybody. This is Minister Terry Nunnery coming to you again with another word from the Lord. Uh, this time, the Lord wants me to minister on about who he is, because there's too many people out there with the wrong conception about who God is. You know, they believe in God, but they really don't know who he is. So this afternoon, I'm going to try my best to explain to you who our God is that we serve. You know, there was a time when God was all alone, you know. He was the only life form that existed, you know. I used to think that God would have been cool with that, you know, because, you know, at that time, he, he didn't have to, there was no sin problem. You know? he, had, he didn't have to be concerned about anybody praying to him, asking him something, begging him for something. <laughs> he didn't have to worry about all of the, uh, uh, all the problems that sin caused. He was alone by himself. But then when I recognize really who God is, you see, God is love. You see, love cares. Love shares. And love is concerned about others. This is why God knew that it would be selfish for him to stay alone by himself and keep all of that goodness to himself. So that's why he started creating other life forms so that he wouldn't be the only life form that, that existed. He started sharing his goodness and thank God that he did because if he didn't, we wouldn't be here today. But even knowing that in his creating, his number one angel, which was called Lucifer at that time, would turn his back on him and started... Uh, 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 started a war in heaven and he ended up getting kicked out. And even the, his creation on the earth would dishonor him, disrespect him. And they would crucify him on the cross. He bled, died, but he rose on the third day with all power. But knowing all of this pain and suffering that uh, his creation would suffer, he himself would suffer. But he still decided to create. See, that's a God of love. That's amazing love. That's what you call agape love, unconditional love. Who wouldn't want to serve a God like that? Knowing that he would suffer as well in the creating process, but still did it out of love. That's amazing. But let's look at some scriptures this morning. Just, just describing to us really who our God is. Let's look at, uh, you know, like I said, you know, um, when, when any member of the Godhead does something, uh, they all experience the same thing. The God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit experience the same thing because it's one God just operating in a, in a different part of the Godhead with a different assignment, but they all experience the same thing because it's one God. Okay? Let's look at uh, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 6, verse 14. I'm going to be reading all these scriptures this morning from the New King James Translation. It says, And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. See, that's God taking credit for raising Jesus up from the dead. Every member of the Godhead takes credit for raising Jesus up from the dead. Let's, let's, let's also look at John chapter 2 verse 19. It says, Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Now, see, that's God the Son, Jesus taking credit for raising himself up from the dead. Now, let's look at 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 18. It says, for Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. See, now God the Holy Spirit taking credit for raising Jesus from the dead. You know, no contradiction. It can all be said like that because like I told you before, when any member of the Godhead does something, they all experience the same thing because it's one God operating in three persons, and there's three persons in one God. Let's also look at John uh, chapter 14, verses 8 through 11. The Word of God said, no, but before I go, before I do that, let's also, I'm going to back up. Let, let, let's go to Acts. Let's go to Acts chapter 20, verse 28. It says, uh, therefore take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. You see, the word of God telling us that that was God <laughs> purchasing the church with his own blood. That was God that was bleeding up there on that cross, purchasing the church with his own blood. Acts 20, 28 tells us that. You see, that's who was on that cross. Not just, that was God himself. Okay, now let's also look at uh, John chapter 14 verses 8 through 11 it says philip said to him lord show us the father and it is sufficient for us jesus said to him 
Have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. You see, Jesus himself revealing, revealing to the disciples who he was. He said, when you see me, you have seen the Father. You, you, you see, see, Jesus is the approachable form of God in the earth realm, you know, because nobody can see, you know, God in the flesh and live. That's why when Moses was 40 days and 40 nights with God, when he came down off of that mountain, he spoke to God and, and, and asked God, I, can I see your glory? <laughs> and then God told him, hey, nobody can see my face. But he, he was up there with, with God 40 days and 40 nights on the mountain. Who was he up there with? God the Son, the approachable form of God. He said, Moses, I, I, I can't let you see my face. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to put you in this rock. I'm going to cover you with my hand. <laughs> Ooh, me. Cover you with my hand. Ooh. Uh, God is, is awesome. He can cover a man with his hand. He said, I'm going to put you in the rock, cover you with my hand. Then I'm going to pass by you. But you can see my backside. But my face, you cannot see. You see? All these times that these prophets were talking with God in the flesh, they were talking with God the Son. See, Jesus did, just didn't come around in New Testament time. He's always been there, you know? See, God never had a beginning. He always was and he always will be, you know? They were talking with God the Son because he is the approachable form of God in the earth realm, God the Son. When Jacob wrestled with God, he was wrestling with God the Son, the approachable form with God in the earth realm. Because our Bible tells us the reason why you can't see God the Father in the flesh it's because, you know, when you see God the Father in the flesh, you see, we're going to know him like we are known by him. You see, he's not ready for us to have that knowledge right here. And God the Father is full of glory. This sinful flesh cannot, cannot, uh, 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 it's not compatible with all that glory. <laughs> it's too much sin in his flesh. It will die. You see, so that's why God uses his son, Jesus to speak into the earth realm and walk the earth realm while he, while he was here. He is the approachable form of God. Amen. Let's also look at uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 20. It says, And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. What more can I read to convince you who Jesus is? And that's the scripture just telling us who he is, telling us that Jesus Christ, he is the true God and eternal life. Amen. But one more scripture before I end this video. Let's look at 1 John chapter 2, verses 22 through 23. It says, who is a liar? But he who denies that Jesus is the Christ, he is Antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. So you see, you cannot have one without the other. You can't say that I believe in God and reject Jesus, his Son, as Lord and Savior. Because God will reject you. If you reject Jesus as Lord and Savior, God the Father will reject you. You cannot have one without the other. So if you are in that category of people... Uh, that, that don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody can come to the Father except through him. He gives you access not only to the Father, but to heaven itself. Amen. So if you would like to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please repeat this simple prayer to me. Say, I believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for the forgiveness of my sins. And I believe that he rose on the third day and he lives forevermore, never to die again. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for all of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And I accept Jesus now as my personal Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. Live in me. Cleanse me. Wash me. Make me whole. Creating me a new creation for your glory. In Jesus' name, I am saved. Now, if you said that prayer, you are accepted by the Father.
Amen. And you will have an interest into heaven. So until next time, stay strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and continue to love the way Jesus loves unconditionally. Amen.